This tool is always available, 24 sevenths. It improves your accuracy and reduces the number of errors. It can perform boring and repetitive tasks instead of you. You've probably guessed that I'm talking about artificial intelligence. But what if I also told you that it has the potential to make humanity disappear? Leading computer scientists and technologists are worried. They believe AI poses a risk of extinction to our civilization. And it's so serious that the situation calls for global action. Experts claim that super powerful AI systems can only be developed after we become confident that their effects will be positive and risks manageable. AI is advancing so fast these days that it has raised concerns about the potential negative consequences of such rapid development. They might range from mass job losses and copyright infringements to instability in different spheres and the spread of misinformation. There are also those who are afraid that people will one day lose control of the technology altogether. The thing is, current AI has yet to achieve AGI, which stands for Artificial General Intelligence. But once it reaches this stage, it will potentially be able to make independent decisions. Doesn't it sound truly terrifying? But the most alarming thing, researchers at Microsoft say that GPT-4 has shown sparks of AGI. It turned out to be capable of solving difficult tasks spanning math, coding, medicine, psychology, law, and many other fields. And it didn't need any particular prompting while doing this. So, are we on the road to super intelligence? And why are most people not worried about it? It might be because we are confused about the very term AI. Most people associate AI with sci-fi movies and don't realize it's our reality now. Nowadays, AI is a broad topic. It ranges from our smartphones to self-driving cars to something that can change our future dramatically and irrevocably. Let's clear things up. We should stop thinking of AI as robots. A robot is just a container for AI. Sometimes they might mimic the human form. Sometimes they don't. But AI itself is inside. AI is the brain, not the body, if it has any. Have you ever used, let's say, Siri? I bet if you're an iPhone owner, you have. So Siri is an AI, and the voice you hear is a personification of that AI. And guess what? There's no robot involved whatsoever. Now, back to the dangers AI might present. There's a chance that soon, AI chatbots will become more intelligent than humans. And then, AI may start, or be used, to generate misinformation capable of destabilizing society. In the worst case scenario, however unrealistic it may sound, machines might become so intelligent that they will take over the world, which would lead to the extinction of humankind. There are other, no less pressing concerns. For example, AI could start playing a big role in making decisions affecting our lives. Imagine people becoming so dependent on AI that they can't live without its advice and guidance. They rely on it in all spheres of their lives, from buying groceries to choosing a vacation destination to picking a name for their child. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Lots of jobs, more than 300 million all over the world, will be, and already are, at risk because of AI. It happens as certain tasks and job functions become automated. This tendency might also affect administrative jobs, the legal sphere, architecture, management, and more. At the same time, we must acknowledge that AI is beneficial for many sectors. Experts predict a 7% increase in global GDP thanks to it. For example, some areas of science and medicine are already taking advantage of AI, developing new medicines and treating some diseases. For the time being, countries are trying to pass special AI-related legislation. It's supposed to classify AI into four risk-based categories, deal with fakes and make companies register their algorithms with regulators. Now, sure, science and technology will continue to evolve, but there are some inventions we just have to forget about. Not because we don't have the resources for them, but simply because they are physically impossible. 
On that note, let's talk about human teleportation, a cool concept you may have seen in the movies. Quantum teleportation has been demonstrated in labs, where scientists have managed to create a connection between entangled photons over long distances. But let's be real, that's a far cry from teleporting an entire human being. Plus, the teleportation in the Star Trek universe, for instance, involves something called destructive copying, which means the original person gets obliterated. Ouch! So even if teleportation were somehow possible, it would be basically like stepping into an annihilation machine. On top of that, the sheer physical and energy requirements for teleportation are mind-boggling. Just imagine a system that can instantly scan, record, and transmit every single bit of information that makes up a human body. And then, it has to compile that person at the destination without even slightly messing up a single molecule. It's a whole lot easier to send someone a PDF. So as much as teleportation sounds awesome, it's not something we can realistically achieve. The technology and energy needed for such a feat are way beyond our current capabilities. Maybe someday in the future, but for now, teleporting ourselves from one place to another remains firmly in the realm of science fiction. And so, mass transportation needn't be worried about becoming obsolete. Human teleportation isn't the only thing on our impossible things list. Let's dive into the concept of time travel, too. Thanks to the genius of Albert Einstein, we've come to realize that time travel is actually a thing. At least, technically. Einstein's theories propose the existence of these nifty things called wormholes, which could connect different parts of space and time. In other words, they might just be the key to creating a legit time machine. Now, here comes the tricky part. According to some super smart physicists, if we ever want to build a time machine, we'd have to figure out a way to harness the energy of an entire star or a massive black hole. And that's not all. There's an even bigger challenge. We'd also need to stabilize the wormhole and make sure that the entrance, or the place where we step into the wormhole, stays open for our return trip. Because, let's face it, nobody wants to go back in time only to find themselves stuck there forever. Unless you could buy Apple stock right at the beginning. <laughs> Imagine this, we've all seen those cool spaceships in movies that have these awesome protective layers, right? Well, it's not completely out of the question that someday, our spaceships could have a similar setup. They could be surrounded by a special layer made of charged plasma or a super strong electromagnetic force. Now here's where things get a bit tricky. When it comes to personal force fields, it's a whole different story. You see, a force field's main job is to either soak up or bounce back a whole lot of energy coming at it. In order to do that, it has to push out with an equal or even stronger force to stop the energy from getting through. Now, if we're talking about a force field just for one person, things get a bit more complicated. The only cosmic force that could potentially work for a personal force field is electromagnetism. But here's the thing. Electromagnetic force only works on charged objects. And guess what? Humans are electrically neutral, which means we don't have a charge to play with. So even if we somehow manage to create a gadget that could envelop a person in a mighty force field, there's no guarantee that the person inside wouldn't get zapped. Making the force field work in all directions would be a real challenge. So, while it's a super cool idea to have our own personal force fields, it's not as easy as it sounds. Physics and our electrically neutral bodies make it quite the uphill battle. Meanwhile, will we ever be able to upload our minds into supercomputers? Well, not really. Because here's the thing, we can't transfer our consciousness. Most methods of uploading focus on copying our brain's basic information onto a digital platform. But what happens to our consciousness when we're suddenly in two places at once? You end up with a bunch of identical copies of your mind, albeit digital, each one claiming to be the real deal. They're all equally genuine, too. As with human teleportation, does this mean the original will need to be destroyed? Hard to tell at this point. This conundrum is what the specialists call the continuity of consciousness problem and is causing quite a stir in the philosophical, neuroscientific, and AI communities. Big topic at parties. The thing is, we're still in the dark about the nature of consciousness. 
We don't have a solid scientific explanation for it yet, so we're stuck in a guessing game. Even if we can't figure out the whole consciousness thing, the idea of uploading our minds is still pretty mind-blowing, though. Just imagine being able to exist in a digital realm, living out all sorts of wild experiences without the limitations of our physical bodies. It's like stepping into a whole new world, or through the looking glass. Of course, there are plenty of ethical considerations to ponder. What happens to our sense of self? Will we still feel like us in the digital realm? And what about the copies? Are they just as valid as the original? It's definitely a complex web of questions that might never have definitive answers. There are some things that will never happen, unfortunately, even when it comes to space travel. Sure, it can be a mind-boggling experience, especially when it comes to the whole idea of zero gravity. It's something that many people tend to overlook or misunderstand. The truth is, you can never fully escape the clutches of gravity, no matter where you are in the vast expanse of the universe. However, there's still a way to achieve that weightless sensation we often associate with being in space. Now, even in the depths of space, various gravitational forces are at play exerted by celestial bodies like the moon, the sun, and the countless stars out there. But here's the thing. If you can match your acceleration with your surroundings, you can create the illusion of floating. This is precisely why astronauts undergo specific training. A unique aircraft takes a dive into freefall, giving them a taste of weightlessness for a brief period of time. Now picture this, being weightless, completely free from the pull of gravity. It's an experience like no other, and those who have had the pleasure describe it as utterly surreal. In a so-called zero-g environment, it's impossible to distinguish between floating and actually plummeting towards the Earth when you close your eyes. That's why aircraft training plays a crucial role in preparing astronauts for the real deal. Now, don't get me wrong, I totally appreciate all the theories about space colonization. But let's get real here. We're not going to be cruising through space on a gigantic interstellar vessel anytime soon. You know those generation ships they talk about? Well, it's a pretty cool concept, but let's break it down in a more down-to-earth way. The idea behind these generation ships is to create a self-sustaining miniature version of Earth that can support a group of brave space explorers on their long journey to another solar system. Here's the catch, though. The distances between solar systems are mind-bogglingly vast, and that poses a major challenge. We're talking about some serious logistical problems when it comes to resources and materials on a ship that has to sustain an entire colony. We obviously can't afford to be wasteful on a mission like that. That's where the concept of suspended animation swoops in. What this means is that we'll have to freeze everyone up for the journey. Just until they reach the desired destination, of course. This also covers the problem of raising a family on a starship. The odds of someone agreeing to spend generations upon generations hurtling through space are pretty low. However, even if suspended animation sounds like a better solution, we are still far from figuring out how to maintain people in that state for longer periods of time. For the time being, tests have only shown this might work for mere minutes. What if someone told you that life actually creates the universe? We're all used to the fact that the universe exists outside of us and was created with the Big Bang. But what if, in reality, it's us who create not just houses and cars, but the whole world? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Well, let's discuss this fascinating theory. For centuries, there's been one way of thinking about the universe. It's brought us amazing discoveries and inventions that have changed our lives. But guess what? This model might be running out of steam. Scientists say that the universe was created from the Big Bang. Then, it was just a bunch of lifeless particles bouncing around, until they started creating stars, then planets, and finally us. The current model is logical and well thought out, but the problem is it's still full of unexplained things. For example, it can't explain how life came to be in the first place. Sure, we can understand how life evolved and changed over time, but the real mystery is how it all began. When exactly did we humans become conscious? How do a bunch of molecules in a brain create our thoughts and experiences? 
that's a real head-scratcher. And even if we put the life and consciousness stuff aside, the current model falls short in explaining the basics of our universe. We know about the Big Bang, but where did this Big Bang come from? How can something come from nothing? It's a great puzzle, and we don't have the answer yet. Well, here comes Dr. Robert Lanza and his wild idea called biocentrism. In 2007, he wrote a scientific article about how biology could join forces with quantum physics. It was so cool that two years later, Lanza and his friend Bob Berman wrote a book that expanded the ideas from the article. So what does Lanza actually believe? Well, he basically says that everything we perceive is within our minds. That everything, the whole universe, is all in your head. Of course, this idea isn't new at all, but Lanza tries to combine it with astrobiology and quantum physics to explain how exactly life creates the world instead of the other way around. His theory says that biology is the boss of the universe. He thinks that if scientists want to come up with a theory of everything, they need to start with biology as the foundation. According to him, our consciousness plays a big role in how we see the world. Space and time aren't real things, but more like how our animal brains understand stuff. Lanza also says biocentrism helps explain a lot of quantum paradoxes and puzzles. He even thinks that it might be a better way to bring all of physics together than Einstein's famous theory of relativity. So, let's take a look at seven important ideas in biocentrism. The first one says that reality is connected to our consciousness, and what we see depends on us looking at it. We've got this idea that the universe exists on its own, even when we're not looking at it. If you have the kitchen in your house, the kitchen is always there, right? Well, not exactly. Our eyes capture tiny packets of light, but the real perception of colors, shapes, and movement happens in the back of our brains. Everything we see is because of light bouncing off objects and interacting with our brain. So without our brains, the kitchen would be just a bunch of random particles. In other words, when you're not in the kitchen, there's no real kitchen there. It's just a bunch of possibilities, like a shimmering swarm of matter and energy. It's pretty challenging to think about, isn't it? But to truly understand the universe, we need to go beyond our habitual ways of thinking. We need to embrace a viewpoint that's simpler, yet more demanding than what we're used to. We need to look at the world in a whole new way. Next, the second and third ideas say that particles behave differently when we watch them. Sounds creepy, right? But it's actually true. We observe this phenomenon many times in many experiments in quantum mechanics. Yes, particles actually change their behavior if they know they're being observed. It gets even crazier. Some particles can even instantly influence each other, no matter how far apart they are. It's like little atoms have a secret connection that defies space and time. This is why Lanza believes that bringing the observer into the picture, like us humans with our thoughts and perceptions, can help us understand things better. He thinks that the observer is the missing puzzle piece that can help us find a way to bring all the laws of the universe together. The fourth idea says that consciousness is super important, and without it, things get all fuzzy. Like we said, everything is intertwined, and there's no separate universe out there that's not connected to living things. Biocentrism suggests that the external world, everything we see, actually depends on us, the biological creatures. We're not just passive observers with clear windows to the world. In fact, without us interacting with the world, it's like the universe isn't really there. Just like the kitchen disappears when we're not there, and the universe is all about how we experience it. Reality is a dance between us and the world. It's a whole new way of understanding everything. The fifth idea points out that the universe seems to be just right for life to exist. There are over 200 things in the universe that have to be just right for life and consciousness to exist. If the Big Bang had been even slightly stronger, everything would have zoomed by too quickly for galaxies and life to form. That means no us! And if the forces of nature, like gravity, and the strong nuclear force were tweaked even a little, 
atoms wouldn't hold together, stars wouldn't ignite, and we would be left with plain vanilla hydrogen everywhere. Of course, there's many theories on why this could be the case. We could also look at this phenomenon the other way. It's not that things were made this way specifically for us, but our existence is a result of things being this way. We're just the result of particle movements and certain conditions. Biocentrism, however, has a more fun way to look at it. Life creates the universe. The universe and its parameters are a reflection of the logic of our existence as living beings. And finally, the sixth and seventh ideas say that space and time are not things, but tools our animal brains use. Think about it for a moment. Does time really exist? Well, the reality of time is a bit shaky. According to biocentrism, time is simply our way of making sense of the world, a tool for understanding. It's not some external force. Our mind weaves together snapshots of information, creating the illusion of time. So when we perceive time passing, it's just our human perception at work. And what about space? In our daily lives, we think of space as a vast container without walls. But in reality, space is full, not empty. There's no fixed measure of distance anywhere. You believe that you're far away from your kitchen, but everything around us is just a bunch of atoms almost without any empty space in it. Well, there you have the basic ideas of biocentrism. In his books, Lanza explores these ideas very deeply and tries to answer philosophical questions. Like if death is just an illusion, or if plants are aware of things. They even talk about whether machines can ever become conscious. Some people aren't sure if this theory can be proven right or wrong. Unfortunately, there's no way for us to test it right now. But Lanza hopes that in the future we can do cool experiments, like huge quantum superposition thingies, or either prove or disprove his theory. Until then, it's more like a cool idea than anything. No matter which theory you prefer, one thing is clear. We live in a truly peculiar world. So let's keep exploring it and discover new amazing things.